Hi, this is Dragos Machuca. I'm the Executive Technical Director for the Ford Research and Innovation Center in Palo Alto. Here we're looking not only for technologies related to software, sensing and autonomy, but also energy, recyclable materials and sustainability. As such, I'm happy to announce that the XTC 2021 winner of the clean tech and energy category is mining and process solutions. Their innovation is a natural alternative to cyanide and acid for processing uh, mining metals. Technologies like this showcase how entrepreneurship can grow a sustainable future through developing non-toxic alternatives and implementing safe and environmentally responsible processes. Congratulations to the Mining Process Solutions team. Now please enjoy their pitch. As we progress towards a decarbonized and electrified world, metals like nickel, copper, and cobalt are critically needed. For copper, a deficit of 10 million tons is projected by 2030. This equates to eight times the production of the world's largest copper mine. Geoscience Australia has identified that in Australia alone, there are $70 billion worth of copper, nickel, and cobalt in ores and wastes that are considered marginally uneconomic using current technology. MPS's glycine leaching technology is able to unlock many of these stranded metals. It also addresses environmental and social issues associated with more traditional mining. Glycine is the key ingredient in our smart chemistry. It's an amino acid that is biodegradable, non-toxic, and naturally occurring in the human body. It is even edible. Importantly, it allows for the selective dissolution of valued metals and is not consumed in the process. So it can be reused, a key source of economic advantage over alternative methods that use sulfuric acid and cyanide. For MPS's flagship Australian project, we have demonstrated a 30% reduction in the cost of metal extraction with our technology. This represents a step change cost advantage over traditional methods. It underpins a total available market of more than $1 billion based on suitable deposits that we have identified so far. We have bootstrapped ourselves to date and are establishing multiple revenue streams. We have an annual recurring revenue of $2 million currently and expect this to grow to over $20 million within five years. We have solid industry validation with over $8 million spent to date by mining companies in testing and piloting. We currently have seven advanced projects across Australia, South America, and Africa, and executed six user licenses. We have an award-winning team who believe passionately that a renewable energy future needs a sustainable mining industry. MPS, unlocking stranded metals to accelerate a sustainable tomorrow. Thanks, Ivor, welcome, great presentation. Let's go to Young question. All right, thank you. Uh, the question I have is really about whenever there is a new material, it seems to take longer than we wanted. So the question of really uh, deployment and economics between the uh, toxic uh, stuff that it need, requires matter versus the uh, glycerin they talked about. Okay, um, I guess the, the answer to that first question is that uh, glycine has been around for a long time as a bulk product, so it's available in the market, it's uh, shippable around the world, and so uh, it's used primarily uh, in a bulk form for animal feedstock. In terms of the economics, um, I guess we're competing against, uh, for base metals, uh, sulfuric acid, and uh, I guess in the gold space we're, we're, we're competing against cyanide. And we're really targeting those um, stranded deposits that really don't have a solution with conventional technology. So in the case of base metals, it's typically something like a carbon, sorry, a, a copper oxide that is consumed in, in high quantities by the sulfuric acid. So the economics don't work with conventional technology and these deposits remain stranded. Similarly, in the gold space, they can have contaminants that uh, consume lots of cyanide. And so we are competing in a situation where they, they don't... Uh, it don't make sense in an economic sense. So we have a flagship project in Australia um, that I think uh, I showed in the slides, and we're, we're demonstrating a 30% uh, improvement in, in operating costs. Thank you. Uh, 
I can't hear Virginia. Question? Sorry, Victoria, did you? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you, Victoria. I, I did, I did. Um, yeah, your question, Regina? Oh, sorry. Of course, your audio went out. Well, first of all, I can say that we don't see many entrepreneurs who have the privilege of tasting their products. So congrats over to you. The question that I have is about version in the in the industry. You, you've described about $8 million in pilots and in testing. When you do those tests, how, what is the time that those pilots typically run for and how long does it, uh, how quickly do your customers convert over to full scale? Okay. Um, the piloting process is very dependent on, on the actual application, but typically it's a sort of a three week uh, program, 24 hours, seven days a week. So we run it continuously so we can get uh, operating data that we can then use to scale up to a full-scale plant. Um, I guess the mining industry is a little conservative, um, and so they they need to de-risk each process before it gets adopted. So, so we, we are, um, I guess, uh, uh, in a process that does test work, then it leads to a pilot program, and then it leads to a plant trial. Um, we, we've been uh, working with our flagship project for probably around about 12, 14 months. So that's the typical sort of time frame from go to work. Thank you. Great, Jerry. Uh, I, thank you. This is I, I'm I'm very interested in this, but I, I I know very little about it. I was just curious. If maybe you could talk a little bit about, uh, you know, there's there's two general questions. One is how. What happens, you know, do you have a supply issue with glycine um, if, if this becomes like a massive way trend going forward? And then the second question is, you know, similar to Regina's question on um, 20 million ARR in five years. I, I'm just curious, you know, what's the way to accelerate that? How do you really um, uh, make this uh, sort of the, the, a much higher growth business um, if, if these pilots are proving out both economically and obviously on the on efficiency. Okay. Um, I, I guess glycine, as I mentioned earlier, is, is, a, is a bulk product. Um, and so, um, yeah, I guess it, it's commercially available and um, we, we actually have done some um, reasonable market studies around uh, if there's an uptick in the use of, of glycine in, in the mining industry, what impact that would have uh, in terms of supply chain. And, and really, it, 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 there's plenty of bulk product currently on the market but there would be very little impact um, that would drive any pricing price uh, point increase. Um, in terms of uh, how to accelerate the process, and um, as I said earlier, it, it's, it is, uh, the mining industry is a little conservative. You, you do have to uh, de-risk it, uh, and that requires stages. And so, um, yeah, I guess it's a, it's a process of, of making sure we've got plenty of advanced projects in the pipeline and, 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 and doing it in parallel. But I, I assume once the first plant is actually implemented, then I guess you know, the mining industry will, will uh, find it easier to adopt. Great. Thank you, Ivor, for Mining and Process Solutions.